The men's 400 meters is one of the premier events in the sport of track and field. From Lee Evans to Michael Johnson to Jeremy Warner to Michael Norman, some of the greatest athletes in the sport have graced the track for the one lap event. At the 1968 Olympics in Mexico City, Lee Evans of the United States would become the first man to break the 44 second barrier in the 400 meters with a world record of 43.86 seconds. He was joined by fellow American Larry James who ran a time of 43.97 seconds for second place. This race would define the event for the next 40 plus years as we would see multiple men go on to dip further and further below the 44 second barrier. By 2010, 42 years after that Olympic final in Mexico City, a total of seven other men had successfully joined Evans and James under that 44 second barrier. The world record at the time stood at a commanding 43.18 seconds set by Michael Johnson at the 1999 World Championships in Seville, Spain. What was really notable is that all nine runners were from the United States, putting America's dominance in the event on display for the world to see. Now, as we know, the event looks very different from what it did in the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. Not only because so many have joined the sub 44 second club, but also because of where these new athletes all come from. So it begs the question, how has the men's 400 meters changed over the past decade? Now, before we take a look back, let's look at the all-time top 10 list as it stood in 2010. As I noted, Michael Johnson held the world record at 43.18 seconds, while the number 10 spot was held by Angelo Taylor, the two-time Olympic 400-meter hurdle gold medalist who ran 44.05 seconds to beat out LaShawn Merritt at the 2007 USA Championships. Keep that race in mind as we look back at the last decade of the men's 400 meters. Starting off in 2011, we can define this year as the rise of Karani James from Grenada. Going into the 2011 year, he was already a world youth champion, a world junior champion, and an NCAA champion. After running 44.80 seconds during the indoor season, winning his second NCAA outdoor title, as well as hitting a personal best of 44.61 seconds outdoors, all at the age of 18 years old, conversations of him dominating the 400 meters for years to come started to arise. James would go on to beat LaShawn Merritt at the 2011 World Championships in Day South Korea that year. This was very significant because in the 12 previous world championships, only three times had a non-American won the title, the most recent being Avard Moncor from the Bahamas in 2001 when the event was arguably shifting to a post-Michael Johnson era. Moving into 2012, a huge shift would occur here as Karani James would go on to win the 2012 Olympic gold medal in London, running a personal best of 43.94 seconds. That moved him to number nine all time and marked the first time in history that a non-American had run sub 44 seconds in the 400 meters. What also made this race notable was that it was the first time no American had made the Olympic 400 meter final, excluding the 1980s Olympic boycott. This Olympic final really symbolized the rise of 400 meter runners from around the world that were about to make a significant impact in the event. It's also important to note that athletes like Jonathan Borley from Belgium and Lugelin Santos from the Dominican Republic were were also running 44.4 seconds that year, which was very fast for the time. Keep that in mind as we go through the next four years in the event. Now, 2013 didn't see as much growth, but it did show consistency. In the Paris Diamond League that year, Karani James would run 43.96 seconds, marking the second time for him to go under the 44 second barrier. He would unfortunately lose his world championship title, but we saw LaShawn Merritt from the United States slightly improve his personal best to 43.74 seconds to win the gold medal at the 2019 Moscow World Championships. That time kept him at the number five all time in the event. 2014 turned out to be another stepping stone in the 400 meters. Karani James and LaShawn Merritt traded a few wins during the season, most notably with James improving his personal best to 43.74 seconds. That made him equal number five all time along with Merritt. We also saw the surprise emergence of an athlete from Botswana, Isaac Makwala. In July of of that year, he ran 44.01 seconds, pushing him up to number 11 all time as well as bringing him onto everyone's radar. Some other new athletes such as Dion Lindor from Trinidad and Tobago, Yusuf Masrahi from Saudi Arabia, and Wade Van Niekerk from South Africa all ran in the 44.4 to 44.3 range in the 2014 year as well. 2015 could really only be described as an explosion in the event. Prior to the 2015 World Championships in Beijing, we saw 
Karani James run 43.95 seconds in May at the Prefontaine Classic. Two months later, on July 4th, Wade Van Niekerk from South Africa beat Karani James at the Paris Diamond League, running a time of 43.96 seconds. That moved him to number 10 all time in the event and marked the second time in history that a non-American had gone sub 44 seconds. Just the following day on July 5th, but this time in Switzerland, Isaac McQuala from Botswana would run 43.72 seconds, which moved him up to number 5 all time in the event, surpassing both Karani James and LaShawn Merritt on the all time list. So prior to the world championships, three men had already gone under 44 seconds, as well as 10 men had gone under 44.50 seconds in the year. So this depth was already truly unprecedented and never seen before in the event. At those 2015 world championships in Beijing, in just the heats, we saw a huge shock where Rasheen McDonald from Jamaica and Yusuf Masrai from Saudi Arabia both ran a time of 43.93 seconds. That moved them both to equal number 11 all time in the event and added to the sub 44 second performers. In the final, we were graced to one of the most memorable moments in 400 meter history. Wade Van Niekerk would run 43.48 seconds to win the gold medal and move himself to number four all time in the history of the event. But that wasn't it. Just behind him, LaShawn Merritt improved his personal best to 43.65 seconds, placing him at number six all time, while Karani James got third place in 43.78 seconds, just short of his own personal best. This would be the first time in history that three men ran sub 44 in the same 400 meter race, and it really solidified how this event would look in the coming years. As we led into the 2016 Olympic Games in Rio de Janeiro, most of the times were led by the big three of Wade Van Nieker, Karani James, and LaShawn Merritt. The three of them owned the top seven times in the world prior to Rio, with LaShawn Merritt leading the world with 43.97 seconds. Now, the Rio Olympic Games proved to be significant for three main reasons. First and most important was Wade Van Niekerk breaking Michael Johnson's 17-year-old world record running 43.03 seconds, literally almost getting under the 43-second barrier. Even more impressive is that he did it all by himself out in lane 8. Second, the big three of Van Niekerk, James, and Merritt would all go under 44 seconds for the second consecutive season, which is only the second time in history it had ever been done. Third and finally, the depth of the entire race was historical. Matthew Hudson Smith from Great Britain finished in 8th place with a time of 44.61 seconds, which is by far the fastest last place time in Olympic history. Braylon Taplin from Grenada finished 7th place with a time of 44.45 seconds. That time would have won him an Olympic medal in every single Olympics except 2004, 1992, 1988, and 1968. Literally in the last two Olympic Games of London 2012 and Beijing 2008, Taplin would have won a silver medal. So just like the previous year, the 2016 Olympics continue to put the event on display, showcasing how much has progressed in such a short amount of time. 2017 was a bit of a transition year as Karani James and LaShawn Merritt did not play a factor into the event this year. Wade Van Niekerk and Isaac McQuala ran sub 44 seconds on two occasions during the season prior to the World Championships. Van Niekerk would go on to defend his 400 meter title at the World Championships in London despite coming up short in the 200 meters for a championship double. This year though, we saw the introduction of two notable names. Fred Curley from the United States ran 43.70 seconds, breaking the 25 year old NCAA record set by Quincy Watts back in 1992. That also moved him up to number seven all time in the 400 meters. We also saw Steven Gardner from the Bahamas run 43.89 seconds, moving him to number 13 all time in the event, and he would also win a silver medal at those London World Championships behind Van Niekerk. So both of these guys added to the deep talent pool of young athletes in the 400 meters. 2018 served as an off year as there were no major championships and all of the big three, Van Niekerk, James, and Merritt, were out for most of the year due to injury. But the event was by no means off for those competing. Michael Norman from the United States really became the man of the year. He first broke the 13-year-old indoor world record running 44.52 seconds at the NCAA Indoor Championships. He followed that up with an outdoor NCAA championship win in a time of 43.61 seconds, which also broke that NCAA record. That slotted him into the number six all-time spot in the 400 meters. With the addition of a 4x4 relay split of 43.06 seconds, 
conversations of him potentially breaking the world record really started to take off. Akeem Bloomfield from Jamaica also joined the sub 44 second club as he ran 44.94 seconds just behind Michael Norman in that NCAA outdoor championship race. Finally, Steven Gardner from the Bahamas showed his consistency in the event running times of 43.99 seconds and a personal best of 43.87 seconds in the 2018 year. Now finally we arrive at 2019 which proved to be just as high quality as the previous year. Michael Norman set things off with a 43.45 second run in April tying him with Jeremy Warner as equal number four all time. Then Fred Curley would come back to beat Michael Norman at the USA Championships where he would run a personal best of 43.64 seconds moving him up a slot to number seven all time in the event. At the Doha World Championships, Steven Gardner would run away with the gold medal, significantly improving his personal best, dropping it down to 43.48 seconds, which now made him number six all time. So here we are now in 2020. Remember that top 10 list I showed a decade ago with Angelo Taylor at number 10 all time running 44.05 seconds? Well, comparing that to today's list, Angelo Taylor now sits at number 21 all time. We now have 18 men who have run sub 44 seconds and of that seven of them are from countries other than the United States with the world record being held by Wade Van Niekerk from South Africa. Since 2010, nine men have joined the sub 44 second club. Comparing that to the previous 42 years from 1968 to 2010 where nine men had also run under 44 seconds. That just shows how much the event has progressed in a single decade. So moving forward, will we see another impressive shift in the men's 400 meters over the next decade? Will the men's 400 meter world record be broken soon? What other events do you think have seen significant shifts in the past 10 years? Go in the comments below. Let me know what your thoughts are on the topic. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we'll be back again next time. Thanks.